This video is going to go through the processes for the coastal zone module. So there are three main processes. One is erosion, second is transportation, and the third is deposition. So erosion is defined as the wearing away of the coast, which is the edge of the land that touches the sea, by the power of the waves. The material that is broken off is then carried away by the waves. So to get both marks for your definition of erosion, you need to have this idea of it's wearing away of the coast by the power of the waves, but then the material is carried away by the waves itself. There are four different types. There's hydraulic action, abrasion, solution, and attrition. And I'm going to go through these with you so that you know how to define them. Another good way of getting four marks for a definition of erosion is to state the wearing away of the coast and then to state an example, e.g. hydraulic action or e.g. abrasion, e.g. solution or attrition. So the first one I'm going to talk about is hydraulic action. So as you can see from the cartoon sketch you've got there, this is when the sheer weight and impact of the water against the cliff line breaks part of the cliff off. This process also forces air into the cracks, which then compresses against the surrounding rocks, and over time this repeated action will cause the rocks to weaken and break off. Abrasion is when fragments of rock that have already been broken off of the cliff through processes such as hydraulic action are picked up by the sea and then are hurled back at the cliff. So the rocks become ammunition which break down the cliff. This is described as a sandpapering effect and causes undercutting and further cliff pieces to be broken off. Solution is the third type of erosion. In some resources and maybe in the question it could be referred to as corrosion. And this is when seawater is able to dissolve certain rocks, for example limestone and chalk. So if a cliff line is made out of these rocks, then it will slowly get dissolved over time. And you can see this by the sketch um, with the kind of rock having dissolved away and disappeared. The fourth type of erosion is attrition. Now this erosion is not affecting the cliff line. It's when particles and fragments have already broken off and are within the waves themselves and they are crashing and colliding against each other. And as these fragments crash into each other, they become smaller and smoother and more rounded over time. So if you're asked to define erosion and give examples of erosion, attrition is the last one you should talk about because it's affecting the fragments inside the water and not the cliff line itself. The second set of processes I'd like to talk about is transportation. This is the movement of sediment, such as sand and shingle, along the coastline. And there are five main types of transportation. Firstly, there is solution. And be, uh, don't, be careful, don't get confused with solution as an erosion method. They're about exactly the same, um, but solution for erosion means dissolving. Solution for transportation means that dissolved material is then transported as a solute in the actual rave water, the seawater itself. The second method is suspension, then there's saltation, then there's traction. And the major process of longshore drift is your fifth type of transportation method. So I'm going to talk through these four small scale methods and then I'm going to talk in more detail about longshore drift. So this graphic here just shows you in action the four small scale processes of transportation. So the top photograph, this one, Okay, is traction and this is where large pebbles are rolled along the seabed so they don't have enough energy the wave doesn't have enough energy to physically pick them up so it's got enough energy to kind of roll them so these are large particles the second small scale process is that of saltation and saltation is the hopping or bouncing motion so pebbles are kind of leapfrogging okay, along the seabed the third type of small scale transportation is suspension. So this is when particles are carried or suspended within the water. So basically they are floating within the body of the water. And the fourth type of small scale transportation is solution. So this is where dissolved chemicals from limestone and chalk are carried as dissolved material within the water. So just like dissolving a paracetamol in water for the dissolvable paracetamol. So you, you dissolve it, you can't see it anymore, there's no solid to it, but you know that it's in within the water. And that's what happens with the process of solution. So there's traction, saltation, suspension and solution. And these happen um, within the waves um, sort of our, our seawater. 
The fifth method of transportation is longshore drift, and this is the major type of transportation at the coast. So from the graphic in front of you, you can see that we've got an annotated photograph to show the process of longshore drift. So starting down in this corner, we have the prevailing wind direction. This is the dominant wind direction that the wind is blowing in. This will cause the waves to flow in the direction. So as you can see, that wave is coming up here, so our waves are going to enter the coastline at an angle. Okay. As the waves go up the coastline, the energy is transferred up, and we call this the swash. And because of the prevailing wind direction, the waves go up at the same angle, so that's our swash. So our waves always go up at an angle. Due to gravity, our waves will go back down the beach as backwash straight, or as right angles to the coastline. Then the waves come in again at an angle, so our little penny, the pebble, that was being carried, goes back up the beach. It's then going to come back down straight due to gravity, up again at an angle due to prevailing wind, and then back down again as backwash due to gravity. So over time, our beach material that the, the waves are transporting is moved along the coast. Okay, so when you come to draw a diagram of longshore drift in your exam, you need to make sure that you label on prevailing wind direction. You have an arrow showing the prevailing wind direction. You label on swash, and you have an arrow showing the wave swash going up. You label on backwash, and again you have an, a label saying what backwash is. You need to mention this idea of right angles and gravity. You must make sure that you distinguish between your beach and your sea, so you draw a line just um, separating the two, and you must include this direction of longshore drift arrow to show what direction your pebbles are moving. Okay, so that concludes longshore drift. I'm just going to summarise this in the next slide in text in case you're asked to say in words, describe the process of longshore drift. So, what is longshore drift? Material is transported along coast by a process called longshore drift. Waves follow the direction of the prevailing wind, which is the most common wind direction. The waves hit the coast at an angle. The swash carries the material up the beach in the same direction as the waves. The backwash then carries the material down the beach at right angles, or straight, due to gravity back towards the sea. Over time, material zigzags along the coast. The zigzag element is something I forgot on our previous diagram, so just make sure you add that on as well. And it's a crucial concept to include in, in a description of longshore drift. Okay, so we've got our key terms, swash, we've got backwash, we've got right angles, we've got gravity, uh, we've got prevailing wind. Okay, so these are key terms that we need to include in our description of longshore drift. The final process to discuss is deposition. So deposition is defined as the dropping of sediment due to seawater losing its energy and not being able to carry the material it was carrying anymore. Now this can happen in a number of places. Firstly, in constructive waves when the swash is stronger than the backwash and this can form beaches and sand dunes. The second way is when the coastline changes direction, for example at a spit, and then if two spits join up together they can form a bar. The third way is when waves enter shallow water and the friction between the wave orbit and the seabed slows the waves down. As it becomes shallower, the wave can't make it cycle, so it starts to touch bottom, and so it's going to really slow it down, so then it can't, doesn't have enough energy to carry the material. Another way is when there is little wind, because there'll be less energy, so less energy means it can't carry as much material, so it's going to drop it. And the last way is when there's a good supply of material. There could be too much material for the waves and the amount of energy they've got to carry it, so therefore it ends up being dropped. That completes this presentation on the processes. So typical questions that you might have could be to define erosion or define transportation or define deposition. It could be to give examples of them. It could be to describe the coastal processes of erosion or describe how a coast um, or how waves transport material. Okay, so you're looking at two to maybe four mark questions that you might get for this. Okay, so 
Revisit this uh, presentation as many times as you need, but make sure you can define and name all the processes for erosion, transportation and deposition. And with deposition, you can link to what type of landforms occur as a result of the process of material being dropped. Okay, good luck.